On page 741 today, we're going to talk about secants. Tangents. And angle measures. And first, we're going to say that a secant is a line that intersects a circle in exactly two points. And we're gonna say lines L and K are secants. of circle C. So if we have circle C, and we take a line right here and label it L, L is a secant of circle K. It intersects it at exactly two points. One being right here and the other being right here. All right, again, a line intersecting a circle in exactly two points. Line K is a secant. So now we've got a theorem. That states if two secants or chords intersect inside a circle. Then the measure of the angle formed is one half the sum of the intercepted arcs. All right, two secants or chords intersecting inside a circle. The measure of the angle formed is half the sum of the intercepted arcs. So here's what that picture would look like. If we've got another circle here. <clears throat> and we get a secant. and a second secant. 
or a chord, it doesn't matter. Secants go all the way through the circle, chords stop on the circle. So in this case, we have two secants. We have L and M. They intersect inside the circle right here at this point. We created two angles, angle one and angle two. So this angle one right here has an intercepted arc. This angle one has an intercepted arc that goes up here. And then the vertical angle to one, which is just below it, has an intercepted arc that's down here. And if we label these points, A, B, C, and D, then we're going to say the measure of angle one is equal to one half times arc AB plus arc CD. The measure of angle one, which is this purple arc or this purple angle, is equal to one half times the purple arc on top plus the purple arc on the bottom. All right. Now, the same holds true for angle two right here. This angle, angle two right in here. That angle and the angle to the left of it, it's vertical angle right here. Those angles are equal to the sum of BC plus AD divided by two or times one half. So the measure of angle two is equal to one half times arc BC plus arc AD. We can also say in this picture, angle one and angle two are adjacent and they form a line. So we can say that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 180 degrees. Those two are a linear pair. They form a line and they're adjacent. They share a vertex. And they share a side. So turn the page. Look at example one on the top of the next page. And we've got a circle here. Now what we've got is a chord. R U. And another chord, ST. Arc RS is 84 degrees. Arc TU is 130 degrees. And we've got an angle of X degrees right here. So we need to find the value of x. So in this case, our x is equal to 1 half times the two intercepted angles. Here's our angle x. Here's one intercepted angle. And here's the other intercepted angle. I'm sorry, the two intercepted arcs. So 1 half of 130 plus 84. So our x is equal to 1 half of 130 plus 84. 
214. And half of 214 equals 107. So your x is equal to 107. All right, example B there. Now we've got a secant going through the circle, intersecting at A and D. We've got another vertical secant intersecting the circle at C and B. And they're intersecting in here at point E. We've got an X degrees, not given. Arc CD is 75 degrees. And arc AB is 143. And we're asked to find the value of x again. All right, so look what we got here. We've got this angle that we're trying to find the measure of, but we don't have the measure of either of, of its intercepted arcs. So what we have to do first is find this angle measure. And if we find this angle measure using these intercepted arcs, then we can subtract it from 180 to solve for x. So the first thing we do is find the measure of angle E is equal to 1 half of 143 plus 75. So 1 half of All right, so we're looking for half of 143 plus 75, which is 218. And half of 218 is 109. So that makes this purple angle 109 degrees, but we need the X. Those two are a linear pair. So we can say that our X is equal to 180 minus the 109. So our x is equal to 71 degrees. And then let's look at angle C where we need to find a, or I'm sorry, example C where we need to find an arc measure. All right, so now we've got another circle here. We've got a chord, AH. We've got another chord, GJ. We've got an arc here, AJ, that's 97 degrees. We've got a 110 degree angle. And arc GH is the X degrees now. So we're going to use that same formula. Because this angle is equal to one half of the sum of this arc GH and arc AH. So we're going to say that 110 is equal to one half of 
x plus 97. Now, the first step in this problem to solve for x is we got to get this one half off of both sides. So we're going to divide both sides by one half. And if you take 110 and you divide it by one half, you get 220. So 220 equals x plus 97. And then we can subtract 97 from each side. So 220 minus 97, 123 is equal to x. Any questions on that portion? All right, so on the bottom of page 742, we got theorem 1013. And it states, if a secant and a tangent intersect at the point of tangency then the measure of each angle formed is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. All right, so here's what a diagram of that is going to look like. You've got a circle now. And we've got a tangent. Remember the tangent intersects the circle at exactly one point. And now we've got a secant. And this secant runs right up through here. So we got point A, point B, point C. We've got an angle one and an angle two. Now, let's keep in mind again that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two equals 180 degrees, all right? Those are adjacent angles. They share a side, they share a vertex, and they form a straight line. So now the measure of angle one is equal to one half of the measure of arc AB. This angle is equal to the half or is equal to one half times this is its intercepted arc.
We can also say the measure of angle two is equal to 180 minus the measure of angle one. So if we add some numbers to this, and I call this 100 degrees, then the measure of angle one is equal to 1 half times 100. which is 50 degrees. And then the measure of angle two would be equal to 180 minus 50. One eighty minus fifty would be one hundred and thirty degrees. Now look, if this arc AB is one hundred degrees, that makes this angle in here fifty degrees. The angle is half of its arc. Well, if angle two is one hundred and thirty degrees, then this arc up here arc BCA is going to equal to 2 times 130. So this arc would be equal to 260 degrees. And keep in mind, the big red arc around the right side and the smaller blue arc down the left side form a circle. So this smaller arc plus the bigger arc have to sum 360. Everybody okay with that? Let's take a look at one more of these. And what we've got here is this look. We got point Q. And then we've got QS. We need the measure of angle RQS. And we're told that this arc back here is 238 degrees. All right. So from Q all the way around to S is 238 degrees. That makes the arc from S to Q, we're going to say the measure of arc SQ is equal to 360 minus 238 because those two arcs this blue arc the big arc all the way around the back plus this arc qs they form a circle so they have to sum 360 so our 360 minus our 238 is equal to 122 So 122 right here. So the measure of RQS is going to be equal to this angle is going to be equal to half of its intercepted arc. So the measure of RQS, I'm sorry, there's a, actually an R up here. R 
Q S is equal to one half of its intercepted arc, which is 122. So in this case, 122 divided by two, 61 degrees. All right, any questions on those two theorems that we covered today? All right, then your practice for today is going to be on page 745. One through three. And then 11 through 16. Actually, eight through 16. One to three and then eight through 16. Yes, sir.